Supply chain disruption, titanium shortage, production stalled. Here's why China is moving to tighten control over one of the most critical materials in modern industry titanium. If Beijing pushes a full-scale export ban, it could cripple Western industries, halting aerospace, defense, and, most alarmingly, the robotics sector. Right now, titanium is a cornerstone of advanced manufacturing, used in everything from fighter jets to surgical implants. But the West's dependence on China for this resource has created a dangerous chokehold. Beijing has already weaponized its dominance over rare earth metals, cutting off supplies in response to trade restrictions. If titanium is next, the fallout could be catastrophic. How bad could it get? Let's break it down. But first, if titanium disappears from Western supply chains, which industries would collapse first? Keep watching. Titanium isn't just another metal. It's stronger than steel, lighter than aluminum, and highly resistant to corrosion. That makes it an irreplaceable part of some of the world's most advanced technologies. Defense. The F-35 fighter jet, already a financial burden for the Pentagon, depends on hundreds of titanium components. U.S. Navy submarines, spacecraft, missiles, and even body armor rely heavily on it. A titanium cutoff would paralyze Western military production. Robotics. Titanium forms the backbone of high-end industrial robots. Without it, companies like Boston Dynamics, Tesla, and ABB would face crippling delays and soaring costs. The push to bring manufacturing back home with automated workforces could collapse overnight. But is this just a theoretical scenario? Or is China actively setting the stage for a ban? That's where it gets even more concerning. Automation is supposed to be the West's answer to labor shortages and rising wages. But without titanium, producing industrial robots becomes a logistical nightmare. A single robotic arm for an automobile assembly line requires high strength, lightweight materials, and titanium, honestly, remains the best choice. If China cuts off exports, the West faces a dual crisis. No titanium, no robots, no robots, no future for domestic manufacturing. Can't we just swap in steel or aluminum? Technically, yes, but each alternative has major drawbacks. Steel is heavier, slowing down robots and consuming more energy. Aluminum is weaker and fails under high stress. So the West is essentially trapped unless alternative sources emerge. Let's look at where titanium actually comes from. The global titanium supply chain is a geopolitical minefield. China, Russia, and Kazakhstan together produce around 65% of the world's titanium. According to the International Titanium Association, China alone accounts for 35%, Russia 25%, and Kazakhstan 5%. These nations dominate not only extraction, but also the high-grade processing critical for aerospace, robotics, and military uses. Beijing's Biot Group, the world's largest titanium producer, supplies the vast majority of titanium sponge, the raw form exported to the West. The United States, by contrast, produces less than 5% of global supply and remains fully reliant on imports, with the Pentagon sourcing 85% of its titanium from foreign producers. If China enacts a ban, where can the West turn? Options are extremely limited, each with high costs or complex geopolitical entanglements that make a rapid pivot nearly impossible. Japan's titanium industry, led by Tojo Titanium and Osaka Titanium Technologies, ranks among the most advanced in the world, producing roughly 15% of global high-purity titanium sponge. However, Japan's leadership in processing doesn't make it a safe alternative for the West. The country still depends heavily on China and Russia for raw materials, creating a supply bottleneck that cannot be easily bypassed. According to the Japan Titanium Society, Japan's annual production remains stable at around 40,000 metric tons compared to China's 210,000 metric tons. Shifting Western demand to Japan alone could trigger price surges of up to 40%, making titanium-intensive industries like aerospace and robotics financially unsustainable.
Moreover, Japanese firms are deeply embedded in the Chinese supply chain. If Beijing restricts exports, Japanese suppliers could face disruptions, either from raw material shortages or indirect pressure from Chinese regulators. Essentially, Japan isn't a replacement. It's another vulnerable link in the global titanium crisis. Africa's reserves, Mozambique, South Africa, and Kenya, hold some of the world's largest untapped titanium deposits, primarily in ilmenite ore, a major source of titanium. But even these regions offer little escape from China's dominance. Over the past decade, Beijing has secured exclusive mining rights across Africa through Belt and Road Initiative investments. Chinese companies, including China National Nuclear Corporation and Lohman Billions Group, now control over 70% of Mozambique's titanium mining projects, according to African Business Magazine. The MoMA titanium mine, Africa's largest, exports nearly 90% of its output to China, where it is refined into aerospace-grade titanium. Western companies like Tronox Holdings and Kenmare Resources operate in Africa, but their output is insufficient to offset a Chinese export ban. Even if supply chains shift to Africa, China's dominance in refining capacity ensures that raw titanium remains effectively locked under Beijing's control. So, why is titanium truly irreplaceable in robotics? Well, it's all about titanium's unique combination of strength, lightweight properties, and corrosion resistance. These qualities make it absolutely critical for high-performance industrial robots, AI-driven automation, and, you know, those super-precise surgical robotic arms. Now let's talk about some alternatives. Steel, aluminum, and even carbon fiber composites. Each of these materials comes with some pretty serious limitations. Steel is just too heavy, which means it reduces speed and energy efficiency. Aluminum, on the other hand, lacks durability, so maintenance needs go up. And carbon fiber? It's expensive, less heat resistant, and honestly, it's tough to scale for industrial use. According to the International Federation of Robotics, global industrial robot sales hit 553,000 units in 2023 which is a 5% increase from the previous year. China alone accounted for 52% of those installations. If there were a titanium export ban, it would really derail Western automation ambitions, forcing manufacturers to redesign robotic systems, a process that could take years and cost billions in research and development. Right now, there's just no viable substitute that matches titanium's balance of performance and cost-effectiveness. That makes a potential Chinese export restriction a direct threat to the future of Western automation. When we look at the bigger picture, China's broader strategy becomes clear. The country has been pursuing vertical integration in the robotic supply chain for quite some time, controlling everything from rare earth minerals to semiconductor production. Titanium is really the final missing piece in Beijing's plan for technological dominance. The Made in China 2025 initiative aims to make China the global leader in AI, robotics, and industrial automation, and has already funneled over $150 billion into domestic manufacturing subsidies. According to China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, these investments are speeding up China's ability to control both supply and production, which leaves the West increasingly dependent and vulnerable. Companies like CS Robot and Automation and DJI are aggressively expanding robotics production, with plans to quadruple output by 2030. By controlling titanium exports, China doesn't just weaken Western competitors. It also forces foreign robotics firms to set up production facilities in China, effectively transferring intellectual property and technology leadership to Beijing. The West's dependence on Chinese robotics exports has already hit a critical threshold. Companies such as ABB, KUKA, and Yasco are increasingly integrating China manufactured components into their systems. If China enacts a titanium ban, it won't just disrupt supply chains. It could actually dictate the future of the entire robotics industry.
Despite Western sanctions on Russian titanium, companies like Airbus, Boeing, and Rolls-Royce have continued, often quietly, to secure supplies through third-party nations, notably India, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates. Russian titanium giant VSMPO Avisma supplies about one-third of global aerospace-grade titanium and has managed to work around sanctions through re-export agreements. Airbus CEO Guam Fry has openly lobbied the European Union against expanding titanium restrictions, warning that cutting off Russian titanium could spark a production crisis even worse than the global chip shortage. Boeing, after initially halting Russian titanium purchases in 2022, has reportedly sought alternative routes through Southeast Asian intermediaries, according to Reuters. The reality is pretty stark. Western aerospace giants simply cannot afford to abandon Russian titanium, which honestly makes a potential Chinese ban even more dangerous. If both Moscow and Beijing restrict exports at the same time, there just isn't an alternative supply large enough to prevent an industry-wide collapse. Recycling titanium is technically possible, but honestly, it's just economically impractical at scale. Unlike aluminum or steel, titanium needs high-purity processing, and right now, only about 5% of titanium scrap is recycled worldwide. According to Titanium Metals Corporation, the United States and Europe really lack the infrastructure to process recycled titanium in meaningful quantities, with only a handful of facilities actually capable of refining aerospace-grade material. The Pentagon has been advocating for increased titanium stockpiling, but, well, current reserves would last just 12 to 18 months in a crisis, far below what's needed for any kind of long-term stability. A strategic stockpiling effort should have started years ago, but with a potential Chinese export ban looming, industry leaders are starting to fear that the window for preparation is closing fast. So, who would feel the brunt of a titanium shortage? First off, aerospace and defense. Aviation would face crippling delays and, honestly, skyrocketing costs. Airbus and Boeing, for example, source over half of their titanium from China and Russia. Boeing's 787 Dreamliner alone contains over 14 metric tons of titanium used in airframes, landing gear, and engines. Any disruption could add billions in costs and delay production by up to five years. Defense contractors are equally vulnerable. Lockheed Martin's F-35 fighter jet, which is a cornerstone of United States air superiority, is composed of 40% titanium by weight. Pentagon insiders warn that without a stable supply, jet production could drop 30% within two years, weakening NATO's long-term military capabilities. The United States Department of Defense currently imports 85% of its titanium, making it highly exposed to any strategic export bans from Beijing or Moscow. Construction is another area that would be hit. Titanium is critical for high-performance alloys in bridges, skyscrapers, and industrial equipment. Shifting to steel or aluminum could increase material costs by 20 to 30 percent, forcing developers to either absorb the extra cost or delay projects. Nuclear power construction is even more sensitive. Titanium is used in corrosion-resistant piping and cooling systems where substitutes are far less effective. Analysts from Wood Mackenzie estimate that a prolonged shortage could increase global infrastructure costs by $10 billion annually, though the most immediate threat lies in aviation and defense, where titanium is basically irreplaceable, the ripple effects could touch every high-tech sector. Western options are, frankly, pretty limited, and time is short. Washington is exploring domestic mining in Utah and Colorado, but regulatory hurdles and environmental concerns mean it could take over a decade to bring these reserves online. The European Union is negotiating titanium trade agreements with India and Brazil, but these efforts are still in the early stages. Short-term solutions rely on alliances with Japan and Australia, though honestly, these just can't fully offset a Chinese ban. Meanwhile, China continues tightening its grip.
If Beijing enforces export controls, Western industries could face a supply chain crisis with no quick fix. Titanium isn't just a commodity. It's a strategic weapon in the fight for technological and industrial dominance. The West is running out of options, and unless urgent action is taken, China may soon dictate the future of robotics, aerospace, and defense.